During the HyperQ build log series, a major design goal was to reduce the weight of the moving mass as much as possible. This would allow faster acceleration and faster print speeds. The heaviest object in this cool XY printer is the X gantry moving along the Y axis. I started with anodized aluminium tubing for the X gantry and have since migrated to carbon fibre. But what would happen if you chose 10mm steel rods in the X gantry instead? Would maintaining the faster acceleration and print speed cause a problem? To test this out, I'll be replacing the X gantry rails on my Hypercube 3D printer between the carbon fibre, the aluminium and the steel and printing a ripple test object to see any differences in surface print quality. But before I begin printing, let's weigh these rails on the scales and see what weight differences we have between them. Start by tearing out the scales and we'll first weigh the carbon fibre tubes. 32.1 grams. Next is the aluminium tubes. 112.4 grams. And lastly will be the steel tubes. 450 grams. Each of these rails is approximately 360 millimeters in length to match my Hypercube 3D printer. And as you just saw, the steel tubes were considerably heavier than the aluminium and also the carbon fiber. In fact, if you chose to use 10 millimeter steel as opposed to 10 millimeter carbon fiber, you would be adding an extra 418 grams of weight, that is dead weight, onto your X gantry. For our test object, I'll be printing this object here. On Thingiverse, this is the vibration, aka ripple, aka shadow, aka ghosting uh, test cube. It's a 20 millimeter test cube hollowed out with the letters X imprinted on one face and Y printed on the other. And you can clearly see this uh, reoccurring dampening oscillation from any direction changes during a print. So this will clearly demonstrate if switching between steel, aluminium and carbon fiber has an impact on our surface print quality. I'll load the Ripple test piece I've just downloaded in Cura version 2.5. As you can see, Cura deposits this part in the center of the build platform. However, the letter X is not facing the X axis, it's actually facing the Y axis. So I need to rotate this part. So I'll click on it, make sure rotate is highlighted, and I'll choose the corresponding circle and drag this object 90 degrees. There, now the letter X is facing the front of the build platform and the letter Y is facing the side. Perfect. For my print quality, I'll be printing at a 0.2mm layer height, two perimeters, 0% infill, so this part will be hollow. I'll be printing in PLA, so I'll be printing at 210 degrees Celsius. I have my heated bed set to 40 degrees Celsius. I'll be printing this part quite fast, 60 millimeters per second, and I'll be enabling acceleration control in Cura, and I'll be setting the acceleration to 1500 millimeters per second per second. As this part will be printing quite fast, I've enabled the cooling fan and set the fan speed to 100%. And finally, because each layer will be quite short, the minimum layer time of changed to zero to ensure that we will be printing at 60 millimeters per second.
And here are the three Ripple test cubes. The one on the left printed with carbon fiber, the one on the center printed with aluminium, and the one on the right printed with steel. And as you can see, the one printed in steel is showing large amounts of rippling and oscillation from direction or corner changes on the face of the print. The aluminium piece is showing very little of that particular artifacting on the face of the part. And finally, going back to the carbon fiber piece, there is virtually no rippling at all visible on the y-axis face. Now let's rotate these pieces 90 degrees and I'll show you what the x-axis looks like on each of these cubes. I'll get them shining in the light correctly so we can see the surface finish. Starting with the carbon fibre cube, you can see there's virtually no uh, ghosting effects on the X. Moving across to the aluminium, it looks virtually the same as the carbon fibre print. And finally, moving across to the steel piece, again, it's pretty good. It's pretty much the same as the other two pieces. So uh, changing the weight of the X gantry doesn't aff affect virtually any, any aspect of the X axis printing. So does reducing acceleration eliminate the ghosting effect from corner changes? Well, the cube on the left here was printed at 1000 millimeters per second per second, and the one on the right is the original uh, cube printed at 1500 millimeters per second per second. And there is a small improvement reducing the acceleration from 1500 to 1000. But unfortunately, with the weight of the steel rods on the X gantry, there is still visible signs of ghosting and rippling across the y-axis face of this test cube. Now, if we compare our original test cube printed at 1500 millimeters per second per second with this one here printed at only 500 millimeters per second per second, we can see the oscillations have disappeared. There is no more repeating pattern from direction changes along the face of this particular uh, ripple test cube. However, there is another problem which manifests itself when direction changes are printing very slowly. What's happening here is the nozzle is spending a lot of time slowing down and speeding up at the locations where the direction changes, and unfortunately these areas are starting to bulge out. So no longer do we have a nice flat face across uh, our corner changes, they are starting to to change the uh, geometric shape of this particular part. Now, for most things that we print, it's probably okay. If we're printing just, for example, a statue or a vase or whatever you're printing, it's not going to change the way the part works. But if we need to print a part which needs to match up or mate up with another part, such as gears or, or other form of puzzle pieces, well then yes, having bulges in the corners is going to cause concern and you're better off uh, increasing your acceleration speed, but reducing your print speed. So let's try that now. So what we're looking at here is the same Ripple test cube, this one on the right printed at only 30 millimeters per second, so half the speed of this one, but the acceleration ramped back up to 1500 millimeters per second, while this one over here, although it was printing at 60 millimeters per second print speed, was only uh, printing with an acceleration setting of 500 millimeters per second. And as you can see, the parts look vastly different. The actual face on this piece over here is perfectly flat. There are no signs at all of any ghosting or rippling along direction changes on the face over here. So the best outcome with a heavy X gantry or any um, axis which is quite heavy is to simply reduce your print speed to eliminate any ghosting effects while maintaining the nice sharp faces which is perfect for parts which bait such as gears and puzzle pieces. I'll just turn these pieces on their sides and the top here is the y-axis and the one on the left has the slow acceleration of 500, the one on the right has the fast acceleration of 1500 however printed at 30 millimeters per second and 60 millimeters per second. And you can clearly see the face on this one over here is bulgy on the corners. It's almost concave in areas. Whereas over here, it's a nice, flat, perfectly finished part. 
And there you have it. If you're trying to reduce the number of oscillations that occur in direction changes, you can try to reduce the weight of the moving masses on your 3D printer by shifting from steel to some other material, such as aluminium or even better carbon fiber. Or you can slow down your print speed to something lower, which doesn't show those oscillations, such as 30 millimeters per second. But I highly recommend slowing down your print speed as opposed to reducing the acceleration. Uh, as the corners are a lot sharper with a slower print speed, whereas a slower acceleration, the corners do start to show bulging, and that will change the geometry of the part, which can cause other issues depending on what you're doing with them. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you next time. I bought these 10 millimeter steel rods locally and the gentleman that sold them to me did say that they were exactly 10 millimeters. All right, well, as much as I like to trust the guy, I'll measure these myself and would you look at that, 9.95 millimeters. <sighs> Just can't catch a break.